What's up my friends? Up for testing today is two examples of 1095. On the bottom we have the Razor Edge Knives PM2 Custom in 63 Rockwell 1095. And on the top we have got the SE6 knife with the edge taped off so that it's about the same length as the length of edge that is on the razor edge knives. I thought it would be interesting to take 1095 and first of all to see how it responds to a dual grit edge. And I also thought it would be really interesting because these knives respectively have at least six points of Rockwell hardness difference between the two. The SE being at around 57 and the razor edge knives paramilitary two reblade being at 63 or higher as stated by the maker. Now I was not super surprised to find that the SE 1095 faded fairly quickly. Indeed I didn't expect 1095 to last super long overall. If you look at catcher testing of 1095 then the place where it shines is not necessarily in wear resistance and that's you need a bit of that for this test but what I was curious about is how much of a difference do those six Rockwell hardness points have on the measured result and the deburring and sharpening characteristics like how clean the edge gets in a dual grit edge and how stable it is. Now I know that the razor edge knives paramilitary to reblade also has a thinner edge and so that has some bearing on the results but the results are quite dramatic I must say the SE cut through the rope laboriously one time uh, for the first half halfway through the rope it was cutting amazing like that dual grit edge felt so good and by the end of it I could not get through the fibers very easily at all and I was like wow this is dramatic dramatic edge change I cut through the rope one time and it tested over 400 grams on the best machine already and I was like no way is it <laughs> that's that's less than a Victorinox paring knife does at around 57 Rockwell as well and so I retested it in a different spot on the edge and indeed it is at over 400 grams so then I became really, really interested. Like, what is this custom rebladed 63 Rockwell, well treated 1095 gonna produce at this edge thickness? Because one cut is pretty brutal for the SE. And I was like, is it possible to get good performance out of 1095 in terms of an aggression based test like this rope cutting test? that measures the width of the apex with a best machine. And to my great surprise, the thing went on and on and on, guys. <laughs> it plowed through the rope eight times. Now, just for reference, that is equal to the edge retention that CPM 154 displayed on a fine edge. It's also equal to the edge retention measurement of LC 200 in in a dual grit edge so eight cuts through this rope is very 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 good uh, super steels generally that I have tested on a fine edge will do up to like nine or ten is sort of the threshold where S35 VN and Van X sort of fall into place and dual grit on those steels, S35 VN and Van X, um, did I think 12 and 20 respectively. So you're looking at very, very, very good numbers for an ingot steel doing eight passes through this rope and incredible numbers for a simple carbon steel. So Razor Edge Nice has done a beautiful, beautiful job on this paramilitary two reblade. I was amazed by it uh, in a dual grid edge returning nearly super steel results. And I have to tell you, the sharpening experience on this was like a pleasant dream. Like I have rarely ever in my life <laughs> experienced such buttery sharpening 
it, it gives great feedback on the stones. It raises uh, a decent burr very quickly, but doesn't pile up a ton of burr. You, if you do some edge leading strokes or you alternate your passes, the burr pops right off. And I have to say, I imagine if this were my knife and I were not mailing it back to the owner, that this would be an excellent candidate for dual grit sharpening um, 1095 at 63 Rockwell. I think that there are some different dynamics that go into that. At the moment, one of the things I'm thinking is like positive versus negative burr formation. Uh, steels with positive burr tendencies tend to let the burr flex around the edge apex and not be stripped off and away. And I'm pretty sure the ductility of this SE at 57 Rockwell is one of the things that's hampering my result here. I, I had a hard time, I think, removing all the damaged metal because it's so flexible. Some of that damaged metal wants to cling to the edge apex where... I think in a harder steel, in your sort of 62 to 65 Rockwell range, the damaged metal that's created by previous sharpening or grinding steps wants to shear off quite easily, pop off at the sharpening angle without doing high angle passes, without doing a hanging strop, without doing tons and tons of edge leading work to stress out that burr and snap it off. Uh, it just wants to pop off. And I think that actually these uh, sort of mid-high or high Rockwell numbers of like 60 to 65 are actually pretty ideal territory for, for dual grit sharpening in that you, you remove a lot of the damaged metal quite easily at the sharpening angle you're doing. So you're able to create that aggression that's created by a dual grit edge and that, that little edge extension that's sort of created without including a bunch of weakened damaged steel because it removes more easily. This is a graph of the results. You can see the SE is that red line falling away at one cut. And you can see that actually, if you consider that I've flipped these numbers to negative so that you can see sort of the edge loss, so higher is better, that though the razor edge knives, 1095 and yellow on the graph, started out at a lower best number, overall its average was higher than CPM 154 in a fine edge, and you would have had a better working edge experience of that. The other result on the screen is Vanex in green, and you can see that a lot of the late Vanex numbers are just a simple working edge between 300 and 400 grams on the best machine. Not a super glorious zippy edge, but you can see that it did extend out to over twice as many cuts. Vanex in dual grit is the biggest result that I've got so far but we've got some heavy hitters on the way. A link to the last test I did is on screen now. For all the rest of you, I'll say, hey, peace out from the home slice. You guys take care.